Carlos Dansby still at this age, two pick sixes on the season, one from Peyton Manning, one from Matt Schaub. What does he mean to this team and this defense? No, that's, that's uh, just indicative of his, uh, you know, of his play. He's been outstanding in pass coverage for us. Uh, and, and that's just another example. When, when he caught it, I didn't, I didn't know if he was going to have the wheels to score. I told, I told him that afterwards. Uh, and the funny thing was, if you see the replay, that Tremont had undercut the ball as well uh, and had a great chance to, to, uh, to intercept it. And his reaction, once he saw Lowe's taken off down the sideline, he started jumping up and down. And he, he was bummed that he knew that was his ball as well. So, no, that, that was a, a heck of a play by him. And, you know, nice job reading off the eyes of the quarterback. And it's just indicative of, of how he's been for us. Tremont got his later in the game, obviously, and probably tossed the ball to Steve Young, who then tossed it right back to Tremont Williams as he went back <laughs> to the sideline there. This defense... What did you see last week against Baltimore that was encouraging to you, and, and what do you need to do to get really where you want this defense to be? Well, uh, again, it was an inconsistent performance. I mean, we could make a cut-up of, of plays where, where, where we were dominant and, and guys were, were all doing their jobs and making plays. Uh, and then there were other plays where, where we had some breakdowns. You know, we gave up a long run where, where our two guys inside both both ended up getting a minus, and, of course, that's where, where the ball ended, ended up going. So. Uh, you know, we got some young guys out there that are, you know, it's kind of on-the-job training. Um, but it's, you know, we're looking for a consistent level of play. And then hopefully at some point that, that we, can get, uh, we can get all of our guys back and, and, and go out there with the full complement. All right, let's get into the popular hashtag Ask Pet. The first one is, how much do you consult members of your team who have played for that week's opponent when putting together a game plan? Well, that depends on the player. <laughs> <laughs> it also depends on the position. Uh, a lot of positions will, will kind of know, you know, what what uh, what their job was. Uh, they, they might not be able to open it up and, and sure. see the big picture. So a lot of it depends on that player's essentially football acumen. Now, if you get a guy that's a a center uh, that, that understand, you know, an offensive lineman that has intimate details about pass protection and the calls and run call, those types of things, and then a you know a quarterback that's played in that system would would certainly be helpful as well. So. Uh, you can be at any end of the spectrum on that, where you can you can get pages and pages of notes and, and get a lot of stuff that, that really helps you. And then the flip side is not much. So it, it, it's, usually, it's usually somewhere in between. All right. Question number two is, immediately following a game, is there any time to decompress, or is it immediately on to preparing for the next opponent? Well, we all take, uh, whether it's just, you know, the typical one would be, would be Sunday night. So uh, as, a, as coaches... Uh, we all take that time to, to decompress. I think you have to. I, I don't think you can just kind of just run right right into the next one. Now, c circumstances are you're on a short week. Uh, if you are, usually you've had some time before to prepare for that. So you still always want to be able to get that time to hit the reset button, introduce yourself to your family. Talk for a second about the grading of the film. Do you hand out your own grades? Is it done by position coaches? How many times does a play have to be watched to be graded, et cetera? What's kind of the, the process there? Uh, Every staff does it different. I know there's a lot of staffs where the position coaches will come in graded on their own first and then go ahead and watch it again a second time with the coordinator. The coordinator will comment on, on the grades or want to know, hey, listen, make sure he got a plus or, hey, make, did you give him a minus there? Here's why. Uh, I'll go through the tape as well. I don't grade every player. I just, there's just not enough time to do that. Right. But I'll make comments for the coordinators. And if a player stands out one way or the other, I'll make sure that comment gets, gets, on, the, uh, gets on the grade sheet as well. But, we make sure uh, that the players get, you know, get a copy of those and, and uh, that they can sit and follow along when you, when you watch it uh, as, as a group. And, and we always stress to them, you're responsible for all the coaching points made at your position. So if I'm a safety, uh, I don't just look at my comments. I make sure that, hey, what, if I'm Gip, I, I know how Witt was being coached or Poyer, uh, that, that I think that, that, that helps you. You can't just have horse blinders on and only worry about your own grade. So, uh, we feel it's a very thorough process, very comprehensive that, that we get we get everything covered, uh, and, and I think we you know we come out of it a better football team. So let's say that a player plays forty plays in a game. What is the in the acceptable number of minuses out of forty? Well, it's it's we don't we don't have a kind of a universal grading system. I think some coaches grade a lot harder, and some coaches will break their theirs down. They'll give a technique grade. Mental. Uh, they'll give an effort grade. Hey, did he get a, a mental on it? So uh, there's a lot of subtleties within. Uh, but you know, it's our, our coaches are, are, are hard on, on the players as they should be that, that they don't give out, you know, great grades just uh, 
you know, very easily. So it's it's a challenge to our guys, and, and they know we have high standards. they got to live up to them. My dad was an educator. He appreciates the red pen every now and then. <laughs> Coach, thank you so much, and good luck against the Bengals. Sure. Thank you. All right, when we come back, we'll be talking with Browns rookie defensive tackle Danny Shelton on the Mike Pettin Coaches Show, driven by Libby Ford.